Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this from Ecasa. It is an M.2 Serial ATA NVMe SSD to USB 3.1 Gen 2 aluminium enclosure. Yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful, but in basics it lets you put an M.2 SSD in here, either a SATA base one or NVMe, and then you can hook it up to your PC using either a USB Type C or traditional USB Type A. So you can transfer data at really quick speeds, but also it's got that compatibility where it will work on backwards compatible systems which don't have a USB type C so that's a pretty good uh, we do have links in the description with the full price but the recommended retail price is roughly 38 pounds 55 <laughs> Okay, as you can see, we've got the ACAS M.2 SATA NVMe SSD to USB 3.1 Gen 2 aluminium enclosure. Whew, if they shorten these the names down a bit, it'd help, wouldn't it? Uh, anyway, it's as you can see there, it's got USB Type-C connection there. It's got a standard USB Type-A connection there. It's got two caps on the end, what keep it on. Um, it says USB 3.1 Gen 2, 10 gigabits per second. That's a transfer speed if you're using the, um, obviously USB Type C, I'm guessing. Um, you've got UASP support, PCIe e SSD, SATA base SSD, USB 3.1 Type C, USB 3.1 Type A as well. So, pretty much what I said. Uh, on the side, you've got your different languages on there. Other side, you've got even more languages. Bottom, not much. Top, just basically says superb de design engineering. On the back, it's hard to see there. Let me zoom in a tad. So as you can see there, it's a uh, B plus M key on there. So as long as you've got a B plus M um, connection for your SATA base SSD, it should connect up, as well as an M key uh, and a B M key as well for your NVMe type, so you should be fine there. You've got a stylish aluminium finish, it's compatible with two, uh, 2280, 2260 and 2242 SSDs. Um, so as it says there, it connects with pretty much everything, super sweet, toolless design, easy access, backwards compatible with USB 3.1 Gen 1, 3.0 and USB 2, obviously if you're using it on an older um, device. Uh, with USB 2, it's going to go a lot slower than if you're using 3.1 Gen 2, uh, and for example. Um, so, and then you've got all your different specifications and different languages there as well. Uh, the product code on here is AKENU3M2-04. Okay, so this is what's inside the box. You've got a nice little bag, which, well, yeah, that's good if you want to carry it around. Probably most people won't use that. You've got your manual, which tells you how it's done, which is pretty straightforward. Take the lid off, it looks like a bit pulls up. It slides out, and there's a little clip what holds the SSD in, and so forth. So it should be pretty straightforward. Um, it comes with two spares. That's the little clip what holds the SSD in on the inside. And that looks like what a spare end part. It's got lids on both ends. So you've got USB uh, 3.1 Gen 1. And then you've got USB Type C on there. Um, now to get the end off, there's little arrows that point up here. I'm not sure if it's too easy to see. Um, but you basically push up. That flips off. And then the SSD slides out from the other side, or should I say the insides, um, push out. And then you can see the innards of it. So just to show you that, close up of what you're getting. As you can see there, you've got a few marks on there. So you should be fine. That's that little clip, which is rubber, which you can adjust and put in the different holes for different sized SSDs. In most cases, SSDs are what they're called 2280 size which is this size here. And we've got a Lexar one we're gonna try in a minute. The bottom, you can't see much of the bottom because obviously it's still in the case and we'd have to unscrew it to pieces, not that we really need to. The basics is you get your SSD, push it in the key, which is there. Move this rubber bit out of the way. Push the SSD in and let the rubber bit clip it back down. So that's in. It's quite snug actually, so that's not going to move. So that's pretty good. 
uh, and then all you need to do is slide it back in to the casing, Ooh, wrong way around. You can tell when it's a live show when you do something wrong, can't you? Uh, there we go. And push the end back on, and that's all in and ready to work. Uh, again, those are the two spire parts, and then you've got the lids. So if we want to check it works, let's hope it does. So if I grab my laptop, which I've got here. I won't need to show you what's on the screen because there isn't much on here. If we plug the USB part into the USB bit on the side, which is there, hopefully the laptop will go ping, and it has, which is good. And that's just going to brought up basically a, well, an empty drive folder uh, there. And then again on the other side of the laptop, you've got your USB Type C. Plug that in again. And that's working straight away so there's no issues there i'll do a few speed tests in a minute but i have a feeling where it being usb type c and usb 3.1 gen 1 it should go pretty quick to be honest with you okay so down to testing i've already run the crystal disc mark results here so you can see the results we're getting a roughly 988 megabytes on the read the writes 936 so you could say between 900 and a thousand megabytes per second on write and read which isn't bad but the actual um ssd itself the MV, v, the nvme drive is capable of close to 2000 megabytes per second so it's actually only getting about half of what it should be but saying that it's still quicker than traditional usb 3 uh, and obviously usb 2 so it's quite quick so a thousand megabytes per second is nothing to uh, uh, sneeze about and atto has just finished and we've got pretty much the same results here again the read speeds uh, on here coming in roughly around about 930, 950 megabytes per second and the write speed actually came in a little bit quicker at 966, 68 megabytes per second so again we're looking roughly 900 to 1000 megabytes per second we're going to do a quick copy test um, just to show you so this file here or folder is got 120 files in its total 20.7 gigabytes um, this is basically a presentation we've done in the past for a review so it's basically got pictures in it it's got video it's even got a bit of text in word documents and stuff we're just going to copy it to the drive to see the real time um, speed on that so as you can see it's going in now and it's copying to the drive, so that's writing to the drive at roughly 630 megabytes per second, and it's staying fairly constant, uh, consistent around about the 600 mark. It is dropping a little bit here and there, but nothing too drastic. So it's stay, stay on an average, I'd say roughly about 600 megabytes per second, which is to be expected, uh, which isn't too bad. So what we're gonna do now is once that's finished, is rename that file there we go so let's rename it and we'll call it arctic uh, 12 for example and i'm going to copy that now from that drive back to our c drive which bear in mind is capable of 5000 megabytes per second um, so there's going to be no um, issue there so i'm copying that back basically straight back onto the desktop and we're going to see what sort of speed it's getting. And as you can see there, it's actually reading in real life at around about 1,400 megabytes per second. So, as you can see, benchmarks only give you a rough idea and they're not always 100% accurate. So, just take that with a pinch of salt. But the basics is this drive does what it says on the tin. You can add an NVMe drive into it or an M.2 um, SATA drive in there if you wish. Uh, and it will run uh, a lot faster than, for example, a traditional external hard drive or even a traditional um, two and a half inch solid state drive inside a caddy. This will potentially go a lot faster and is only really limited by the speed of your USB ports on your PC. Obviously, if you're using a USB 3 port, it's gonna go slower. If you use USB 3.1 Gen 1, it's gonna go faster. We're currently using a 3.1 Gen 
two just to make sure that there's no limitations either way but there you go so as you can see it does everything we said on the tin can't see any problems it's toolless design so you can easily slap a different ssd in there if you wished so if you want to swap and change not a problem and as i said no tools so you open it up and so forth without any tools and you don't have to swap cables or change anything on there it will work on a traditional usb type a connection or the new usb type c connection